welcome to Biotruck Sailing. As you can see, we're not on a boat and it's a rainy day, so what better day to talk about mainsails? Technical sailmaking has really come of age and a lot of the uh, great modifications that we're seeing on modern cruising boats have come from the racing circuit and the construction and material of sails is no exception. So the type of sail you have really is going to depend on the type of boat. So racing boats all have composite sails. So if you look at the Vendée Globe, um, the, the sailing race that's going on right now, um, a solo around the world race, those sails are all composite sails. And most of the sail ma manufacturers have composites, but they all have different types of formulas. So the main sails on, on a Biotrek are composite. They're called DFI because they're made by Incident Cells in France. And many different cell manufacturers have composite cells. Composite cells are also called laminate or membrane cells. And these are not woven, but they're made from layers of material with structural fibers that are placed between films of the membranes. Some are molded, some are pieced together like a jigsaw puzzle. And the best cells are molded to the flying shape of the sail. Many are made with carbon fibers, which is a really strong material, and that makes the sails black. This is how the sails on Biotrek are made. So Pierre, why do the more modern catamarans have square-topped mainsails rather than the triangular point? You know, it's to increase the surface of the mainsail, and the easiest way is by extending the top like this, you end up having a much larger, uh, bigger roach, so you increase the surface of the mainsail very quickly, and get, just get more power out of it. And so in our Biotrek 1, we didn't have that. No. So that was an older boat. When did they start doing that? Well, first the material had to evolve for it to be able to do that because the old material would just have stretched out. So you can only do that with uh, higher quality, uh, low stretch material. So the composite or laminate material? Or? Yeah, in the newer type of sails. So all that only happened a few years ago. And then they started being able to extend you know, the, uh, the top of the sail and they found that it really worked well. So it's still, it's still evolving but they're getting closer and closer to an aircraft wings. So is that why we have the top? There's one batten going horizontal and there's one batten going up at an angle towards the, uh, the, the cut corner. Yeah, the one going at an angle is the one that makes the square at the top of the right. sail. And then it starts going down from that. So point. can you have a square cut sail at the top without battens? No. Uh, one thing to remember is with these square top main cell, the sail area has increased uh, quite a bit and uh, you just can't put these sails on the normal boat and just hope that the performance is going to go on because the center of pressure ends up being moving too far aft and the rudders are moving too much so the boat has to be designed for those sails in mind. On our other boats we've had different types of sails. If you have a small boat like my 26 foot monohull called Extra Dry, a Mirage 26, composite sails wouldn't make sense. We just had your regular Dacron sails on that boat. We just used extra dry for weekend cruising, just to have fun on the water. And why would you buy a composite sail? They're more expensive. A lot depends on the type of boat you have, whether you're racing or cruising, how large is your boat, and what kind of sailing do you do? Where do you do the sailing? Is it in the northern climates or the tropics? And how much do you have your boat out per year? Because um, value for sails is not always the lowest price sail but it's about the sail life and also performance. So on a large cruising catamaran, which has a very wide beam, and the sails tend to be uh, with very large roach, composites on the modern boats or the newer boats uh, really make more sense because of the heavy loads and the large roach on those sails. The key to sailing performance is really reducing stretch in the sail. And that's where composites really, really succeed. So, Tight cells are obviously a good thing when you're going upwind, but having a cell without stretch is also better when the winds pipe up so that the boat is easier to balance and easier to control. In the case of so-called performance cats, then composites are always um, the reasonable choice to have because if you do maintenance and keep those cells in good shape, they can actually last just as long as lower cost um, Dacron cells will tend to stretch and get out of shape very quickly. On our last boat, also called Biotrack, it was a Katana 472, we just kept the sails that were on the boat because that boat hadn't been sailed very much before we bought it. It had crossed the ocean and then the owner sold the boat. And we used those sails for around the world, but after the round the world, they were really finished. 
on some of our earlier videos, I showed some damage that we did to the cells. There was an anti-vibration device installed, which would touch the cells at certain points of sale. And we could see that material was rubbing off. So that needed to be repaired. And by the way, we did take down those anti-vibration devices and we don't find the vibration really annoying. Sometimes at port, you will hear some vibration. I kind of find it like the singing of whales. It's really a nice sound. I guess the question viewers are interested in is how long do composite cells last? And as I mentioned, that depends on the type of selling you do. Now, of course, if they're head cells, they will have some UV protection because composite is really susceptible to UV damage. And if you do a lot of sailing in the tropics or doing around the world, um, those cells are not going to last as long as sailing in New England where we are now. But we're always careful to make sure we zip up the um, cell cover and make sure that the main cell is well covered. The difference with composite cells and older technology Dacron cells is that composite cells will pretty much keep their shape just until they explode or just in, uh, un until they can't be used anymore. Whereas the Dacron cells will get stretchier and stretchier with time until finally you can't stand it and you've got to buy new cells because they've just lost all their performance. The factors that will affect cell life are so moisture, sunlight, and fatigue. And what will happen with a composite cell is rather than getting all stretchy and blown out, it will tend to delaminate. The other thing that can reduce cell life is flogging of the cell. So never let your cell just flap in the wind. I think all sellers know that. Pierre is expert at setting cells, so our cells are never flogging in the wind. <laughs> there are different companies that make composite cells and they all have different names. On Biotrek, the stay cell, the Genoa, and the main cell are all DFI cells from Asinoff cell, and you can see they have a beautiful shape. As a comparison of the 3DI cells from North Cells on an Utramer 5X, um, here's some videos of POM3 which, which shows the North Cells, and you can see that these are beautiful cells as well. So by keeping cells in top condition, you can keep your composite cells much longer and have them perform longer. So we had preventative maintenance done by Doyle Cells um, in New England. Doyle Cells located in Northern Massachusetts near Salem. And, um, and they helped us take the cells down and they helped us put the cells back up again. And when we put the cells back up, really, they look just, just as new. I mean, so I would highly recommend anyone with composite cells do get the annual maintenance that's recommended to keep the cell life. So here's the discussion of the main cell before we had it serviced. Yeah, long term, yeah, I'd be kind of worried about all this kind of... Yeah, I've just been pushing a little bit, like I said, of that transparent stuff. Right? Yeah. But, uh, you know, I mean, it's... At some point, you're going to have a whole cell sure. covered with it, right? Yeah. Because um, the taffetas that we use, um, you'd end up with a with a thicker taffeta on the sail. So the sail may end up a little bit heavier, yeah. but you're cruising offshore, so you might as well make it that it. Um, yeah. But, you know, with a taffeta on both sides, you're going to get a lot more chafe resistance, a lot yeah. more, you know, the UV damage, the, you know, everything that goes along with it, you know, especially if you're heading south. Because right. yeah, this, this is just a clear, this is just a clear film over the Seems like carbon. It, yeah. Because yeah. that's all carbon exposed there, so that's yeah, that's not good. This is more, yeah. That's um, the shape looks all right though. Yeah, and it's good. You've got the you've got the proper battens. You've got the Sea Tech battens. So that's one of the big problems you get with boats. Sometimes with boats this sort of size, people don't want to spend the money on the battens because they're expensive. Well, no boy idea. <laughs> but um, yeah. but they'll you you, know, you end up just with such a better shape sail. Do you have the socks on the battens? Are they got the white covers on? Them? No. no, no. So there's cover stuff that you can buy yeah, that cheap. it's basically, it's like, um, almost like cheesecloth. And basically it's yeah, a tube it. and you stick it on the battens and you resin it at each end. And, and it's something you can do yourself. Mm -hmm. And then if a batten breaks, it doesn't shatter and splinter and you can get the whole batten back out because it's all within the sock. So that might be something you'd want to That's interesting. Want to look at. You can, you can buy the, the sock stuff from Ctech. And you're, su you're suggesting to put another layer? No. So yes. instead of a film, we'd use a taffeta, which is a thin Dacron. Um, so you'd end up with a thin Dacron layer on each side so that you've got a lot better protection on the sail um, as far as chafing and UV damage. Um, so that's on a new sail, not too. That's on. Uh, you can't put it. No, you can't put it on this one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, but like I said, yeah, if we take it in, if you want, we can go over and dot the really big ones. Yeah, yeah, it's just going to be the sticky back. But well, at that's least, what we've been doing. Yeah. Um, I know you guys make good sales. And I've, I've done. Uh, I've had some of your sales in the past on previous boats. And oh, nice. Really yeah. A lot of the gunboats and the HHs. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, and all of those we've all done just with taffetas. We don't do anything with, with a film or anything. It's just not worth it. Even the race sails. It's, yeah, it's, it's not that big a weight difference. So, unless you're going to do a full-on race program and you're going to replace the sail every six months and it goes up for the day of racing and then goes back in an air-conditioned container. It's just not worth it. Yeah. Have a look at them, but should we drop this down? Yeah. That in case the wind picks up. <laughs> You just uh, you're just chilling out with all these people on the boat, right? A little nap, wanting to have a tummy rub. That was fast. Okay, got another four. That's because they can only build them so long for shipping. So that's the longest one. Yeah. Yeah, that's the bottom one. Filmmakers sure. for today. We repaired the main cell. It's going up. Our new cells have arrived from France, so we're going to put the new Genoa up. And. Try a new reefing system again. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's just a hole not reinforced by anything. Yeah, there's no load on that whole load. Put on the side. Now, have you calculated how much Dyneema, how many wraps for how much tension? No, I just kind of, I just generally, just from all the times I've done it, I just... The so lashing. Half hitch that way, two half hitches that way, and then two this way. Oh my God, that's so cool. And that's it. Back the other way, so you go two each oh way. Do you guys have uh, one spool as well today? And then just a little stop and up. Now we'll go nowhere. Whoops, we have a problem up there. I will. I'll do the I'll do the curve. Getting these locks to work. So that's through here. So that's still all tight. So that should be all okay. Oh, it is still tight. Oh yeah. good, excellent. Yeah, because we So we don't have to worry about it. Yeah, because we took the oh, because we took the head off instead. So okay. Yeah, I re-rigged that whole thing. Yeah, oh, so okay. so we can just attach the main halyard and then yep. and then we'll just start once you get that. So he's putting the piece of the track on that comes off uh, so you can get the um, cars on very easily. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just pointing out some of the patches we did. This is one of the one of the bigger patches down here. So they're very well matched. Pretty close. So we've restitched the tack webbing and the webbing at the first reef. And one of the webbings was actually missing. It had come yes, off. Yes, yes, I ripped it off when I was doing the test of that shackle. Oh, everything at, at the you know the aft reefs on the leech were were okay. <laughs> Thank you 
for watching and stay tuned. The next episode will be about our hollow and then there'll be more episodes to come on sales, electrical systems, and other boat projects. 